Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we will be reacting to go to spots at Lakeland's 10th Street Crossing, Danny Harmon, today. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. Over-the-road freight trains have to change crews after so many hours of service. A crew is not legally allowed to operate more than 12 hours in a shift. So, crew change points are selected along the main line. Usually, they're at the farthest point from the originating terminal that a crew can bring the train in 12 hours or less. Other important factors are places where a train can be stopped for long periods without blocking crossings. Easy road access to the head. Tent Street is one of the best sightings for that, for basically stopping your train and being able to sit it in there, because honestly, it's really about halfway between Hialeah and Waycross for 452, 453, and it has no sightings, and you can leave a train parked in that siding forever if you really wanted to. Head in so crew vans can come as close to the engines as possible and preferably at a siding so the main line isn't blocked if the train has to be left unattended. This is 10th Street, the north switch of a two mile long siding at Lakeland, Florida on CSX's Vitus Sub. It's a desired crew change point because it was built as a clear siding. No. Okay, one thing that I do notice here that's kind of weird. Why is that siding signal the that guards the entrance to the siding only give an approach on top because here's the reason listen the Lakeland Junction signals the same way so why isn't that one just a normal head of normal three I don't know uh, you can get a medium perch medium and you can get a perch medium no clear no you can get slow clear and stuff off that signal back there road crossings and it's about 50 miles short of being halfway between Hialeah and Waycross perfect for 452 and 453 and that makes it one of my go-to spots for shooting trains Q453 is the southbound passing on the main stopped in the siding is K984 empty rock hoppers out of Mulberry Florida back to Junction City Georgia this isn't a crew change for K984 as it just originated about 15 miles to the south. This is a meet. 453 is rolling downhill toward Lakeland Junction two miles ahead. There he'll stop and change crews. On the return trip, 452 will do the same thing except he will stop here at 10th Street to change crews. Just a few seconds after 453 clears the switch, the 10th Street siding signal imp Okay, right here is kind of a good spot. So looking northward goes to Kathleen, Vitus, and so on. Going south goes into Lakeland Junction, and if you take go west, it takes you into Plant City. If you go east, it takes you to Auburndale. Improves to a limited clear, which is an indication saying, move at limited speed. Okay. I know y'all want to see this, but here's the thing. Limited clear. There's a big difference between limited clear and medium clear. And I didn't know that for the longest time. A limited clear is a flashing green. A medium clear is a steady green in the middle. Remember the middle. 45 miles per hour through the switch. Then, when your train has fully cleared the turnout, proceed at max authorized speed. And even though this is running uphill, K984's engineer has no problem getting the two big engines up to limited speed with that empty train.
big feeling that these types of trains right here, these coal trains, are going to disappear within the next 10 to 15 years. They, they just, they don't have efficiency anymore. The only, really the only place that uses them that's not Kentucky or, because Kentucky probably uses the most coal trains, is Junction City, Georgia, and there's some other places around Pennsylvania and stuff, but that's really it for coal. Sometimes the train is left on the main line to await its new crew. Q452 is often too long for the 10th Street siding, so the main is the only option. Passing is still possible, though, thanks to the layout on the south end. In 2013, this track plan, Lakeland Junction, was reworked to allow traffic off the Winston side of the A-line to move on to the Vitus sub siding, while a second train occupied the main line. Okay, right here is a good spot. Lake, so you can, looking northward, 10th Street is up and around the corner, right there. The track that uh, 452 is on, that is the main. The track on the, right next to it is the end of the connection track. The track on the far left goes out to Winston, Plant City, and Yeoman. This is a different day and a different 453, but that's exactly what's happening here. 742 the 19th, got a limited clear at 10th Street, siding the main northbound. Look at the CS exit 913. Q742, the Tropicana Juice Train, is running around the tied down Q452 here at 10th Street. Two engines, six cars. This was November 2016, and probably one of the examples that CSX CEO Hunter Harrison used in his argument that unit trains are grossly inefficient. Learning the habits of the railroad helps make rail fanning a lot more. Okay, right here there's a crew van. So 452 is pulling away from a crew. And these engines are both in the yellow nose 2 paint. Well, I'm not sure about the first one, but I know the, the second one is. For fun, a Sunday afternoon check at 10th Street reveals Q452 just pulling away from a crew change stop. The crew van there to the side is how I know all this. If you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel, and I hope you are, you know that 452 is a daily mixed freight on its way from Miami to Waycross, Georgia. When the crew bus pulls out, it reveals another train coming up the siding. It's Q60. Okay, you see that? You see that figure? Look to the right, right above the derail, and right next to that bottom ditch light. You see that? That's a human. I know it is. Don't call me crazy. I know it is. 04. Daily phosphate loads and sulfur empties from Winston Yard to Waycross, Georgia. 604 will continue creeping uphill to 10th Street until 452 clears. If the dispatching is good and the train handling is good, 604 won't have to completely stop. When 452 clears, the signal for 604 improves to a restricting. The indication here is keep moving, but only as fast as you can safely stop your train in half the distance you can see ahead in case of an obstruction or wrong switch. In no case, faster than 15 miles per hour. The system won't allow any higher speed until the earlier train clears this signal block, which is the stretch of track we're dealing with here, and runs to the next signal ahead about three miles to the north. Now the signal improves to a red over yellow, medium approach, which says proceed at medium speed, but be prepared to stop at the next signal ahead. Depending on how fast the train ahead is. One of the things that I, that when somebody asked me why do I love trains so much is this signals 
these aspects. Like, usually when you see this signal, you're usually the middle head gives has red, yellow, green. That bottom head has red, white, and green. So you can get a medium, approach medium. Or you can get a slow clear, restricting, medium approach, limited clear, medium clear. Is moving, that next signal will likely be green. Winston Pass. This is Winston. This is where pretty much a lot of stuff happens. This is the old signals. Another reliable rail fanning place is the entrance to a yard. This is the south leg of the Winston Y and the throat of Winston Yard. We're about five miles from 10th Street and most of the traffic that passes there originates here. Today a yard job is doubling a loaded phosphate train for departure. Doubling is the practice of pulling a string of cars out of a yard track, then backing that onto another string of cars in another yard track, thus doubling the length of the train. The operation is necessary, but maddening for drivers stuck at the crossing. It's doubtful that any of these folks understand what's happening. You know how mad everybody is here? That's air this is Airport Road, right? Airport's only about a mile away from Winston. And right here, you know how many people do you not uh, you can't this this cuz it's right off 92 US 92. All they see is a train pulling across the road, blocking them then stopping and going back the other direction. Lunacy for those who don't get railroading. The stop gives us a chance to see how loaded cars smash down on the truck springs. My longtime friend Uncle Joe o Okay, here's the thing that I've learned, and this is how I tell if a car is loaded or empty. Springs. If they're compressed, car's loaded, and if they're not, car's empty. And then seals are... Can Oats taught me this is the way you can tell whether cars are loaded or empty. Springs compressed, car is loaded. Seals are also an indicator that the cars are loaded. After the car is filled and weighed, a wire cable seal with a unique number is put across the opening mechanism of the hopper doors. This prevents tampering, theft, or leakage in transit. Today also demonstrates the downside of rail fanning at yard leads, industries, or on double track. You can miss stuff passing on the other side. careful in double track territory so say there's a train on one track and there's a track in front of you you can't be standing in that track because you don't you never know like Amtrak 92 southbound of Tampa could just you know sweep you right up so you gotta be careful in double track territory this was Amtrak 91 inbound to Tampa I guess Finally, the engineer returns his train to the yard, ready for the road crew to get aboard and take it north. The 
The engines are passing underneath the southernmost ACL-era signal cantilever left on the CSX. In early 2018, Lakeland still has five of the old Atlantic coastline structures left, but their days are numbered. This is the Southward Absolute Signal, or SAS, for South Y Winston. It holds signals for main track number two and for the leg of the Y coming out of Winston Yard. A quarter mile west is the northward absolute signal for South Y Winston. The tall signal protects track one on the left, so indicated by the doll arm on the mast. The dwarf signal protects track two on the right. I'm not sure. I wonder why there's not a cantilever there. I have no idea. Also, I think you can just get a restricting with that cantilever or with that signal right there. Sure, why there's no cantilever here. Maybe there was, and it was among those removed in the 1980s. This is one of the two full signal bridges at North Y Winston. The train coming out on the north leg is, I believe, the Auburndale local. At South Lakeland, there are two cantilevers remaining. This one, the NAS, guards both tracks one and two. This is probably the most photographed of the Lakeland signal bridges as it is the most accessible, standing basically in the parking lot of Goddard's Produce and directly across from the old Lakeland SCL passenger station. This is the northernmost of the structures, the SAS South Lakeland. The signal on the tower guards the outside track. The signal to the right on the mast controls the inside track, which... See, this looks like double track territory, doesn't it? But no, it's the south leg of the Lakeland Y. The track that goes off to the right, I assume is a station track. I've never seen a train go down it though. The track on the far left is the main. The track that opens up to the left. Although it looks from my drone angle like double track, it's actually the south leg is the uh, other track leg of the Lakeland Junction Y on the Vitus subdivision. It's sad to see the end of these trackside signals but it's also kind of exciting to see a revitalization of the railroad. The new signals are part of the oncoming positive train control program. PTC may have a profound impact on rail fanning, but we'll have to wait and see about that. At South Lakeland, Florida, at milepost A851.8, this is Danny Harmon, out. I'm super tired. It's 3.01 a.m. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Sorry that there's two reaction videos right behind. Well, maybe there is, maybe there's not. I'm not sure because it is a... It's Sunday at 3 in the morning. I... I my future me will tell you. Alright guys, see you in the next video at the AR 853.1. I don't even think that's the mile post, honestly. I don't even think it is. I think it's A860 A860 something. 63. I don't even know. Good night, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.